Hi, I'm Steve from Whiskey and Red. Let's build some cool shit. Today we're gonna build our own testimonial feed. So it's gonna be very much like uh, downloading one of these testimonial plugins, but without downloading a testimonial plugin. We're gonna build it right inside Elementor Pro. And we're gonna do so using ACF, so that's Advanced Custom Fields. That's this plugin right here, Advanced Custom Fields, which is now by WP Engine. Uh, the free version is what I'm using. Uh, we're gonna use that and we're going to build our own testimonials custom post type and set up some taxonomies so that we can filter it into different locations. So I've set up taxonomies for branding testimonials versus website testimonials so that they can be fed on different service pages. Um, and then we're going to build out those testimonials and make this beautifully designed testimonial feed. So let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is jump into our ACF and set up our custom post type. So I've got one set up here. You can just mirror it. Very straightforward setup here. I was very creative. I named it testimonials. Testimonial for a singular label and our automatically generated lowercase slug. And I added a couple of settings in the advanced configuration. Normally we'll default, this will be turned off uh, to turn it on, turn it on. What I did was turn off the editor option, just a personal preference. The way I like to view these uh, post types just makes it a little bit more streamlined and straightforward. So that's the way I like to do it. And then under the visibility tab, I like to add the icon. So just better than default little pin. That way in my sidebar, it'll look nice and be easily findable for the clients later. The rest of the options I pretty much leave as the default. You can pick and choose as your needs demand. Uh, and go ahead and just save your new po custom post type here. And we'll move to the next step. I like to set up the taxonomies next. So here under our taxonomies on under ACF, I have testimonial categories here. Nice and simple. I've assigned it to my new custom post type, which is testimonials. And I prefer to set my categories just like normal categories and make it hierarchical. Say that five times fast. But I like to set mine as hierarchical to make it a little bit easier to organize these things just like we would normal categories. And under advanced configuration, under visibility, I like to turn on the admin column. What this is, is when we actually look at our testimonials here, you'll see our testimonial categories here in our menu just to keep it easy to sort and filter and to change these things around. That's the only setting that I go with here. Again, pick and choose what you need to to get the job done and save your new taxonomy. The next step here is our field groups. So depending upon what you wanna list and show in your testimonials, so for our purposes here, we have our statement, is what I'm calling this top section here. Uh, we have the person's name and we have the business name. So the way that I've dealt with this is in my field groups. So you'll go ahead and click add new, add a new field group, and create something that looks like this. So really simple here, the person's name will be the name of the post. So we don't need to add that here in our fields. I just have the business name and statement. The business name I have set up as a regular plain text field, which I've named business name. You can call it whatever you want. And under statement, I'm using the text area. You tend to get some weird results when you use this what you see is what you get editor when it comes to loading it through dynamic tags. So be cautious of that. Um, if you get some extra weird spacing, if you try to use that thing, come back and use the text area. But that's why I recommend it. Go with a simple text box. Last item here, which is very important. Right now I happen to be looking at this presentation tab underneath settings, is my location rules. Making sure my post type setting is equal to the name of my custom post type. And you can change all these settings if you want to change the way that it's displayed. Uh, once I remove that editor box, you'll see that it displays really nicely all by itself. So that's what I've done here. I've just left that pretty much default. So jumping over to our testimonials, I went and created uh, six of these already. So definitely start with a handful to make it a little easier to build your feed. When I open one of these up, 
You'll see here, it kind of looks like that old school non-block builder WordPress, but we got rid of the editor box and now we just have our testimonial name will just be the person's name, keeping it simple. Our business name is here and the statement that they make. Notice no quotation marks. We're gonna add those in when we do the dynamic tags in the loop builder. And also we have our testimonial categories over here on the right. So I'm using web design and branding as my categories and let's start designing our testimonial feed. So let's head on over to our templates area. And we'll add a new template. We'll select loop item, choose source type, leave as posts, and we're gonna name it. So how about testimonial feed and create template. skip all this so the first thing I recommend is come down to the bottom left corner that small gear icon we're gonna open up the template settings and we're gonna change our preview settings to make sure that we see our testimonials when we add these dynamic tags so instead of post here we're going to select testimonial or whatever you named your custom post type and we're going to apply in preview all right so what are we doing here we are building our container for our testimonial. So we're building this box, not all the boxes, just one box. That box will contain our statement, our person's name and our business name. So first let's add a container to our page. And I love starting with padding. And we'll drag a heading in here and get started on these dynamic tags. Using this icon here, label dynamic tags. We're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom, select ACF field. And then we're gonna click on ACF field again. And we're gonna to go to key and select statement. Now we have our statement there. Go ahead and just duplicate this a couple of times. And I'll keep this last one selected. I'll re click here ACF field and this time we're going to pick business name and our middle one I'll go ahead and just clear out my ACF field because we're going to use a dynamic tag of post title instead to pull that person's name perfect so we have our statement we have the name and we have the business name so I promised you quotes so let's do some quotes we're going to click this ACF field box and under advanced before, we're going to add a quotation, an open quote, and we'll add a closing quote. Perfect, that way I don't have to add quotation marks in every single testimonial that I upload on the website. So then let's go ahead and publish this because I like working on the design side on the actual page that it's in place to uh, help me visualize better what it is that I'm working with. So let's go to our page that we want to add our feed to. And we'll add a container. And you know how I feel about padding. Then we'll add our loop builder. So we're using our loop carousel And we want to add the template. There we go. But notice it is not loading the post that I want it to. So we need to go to our query settings and change our source from posts to testimonials. Perfect. Now we have it loaded on the page and we'll go ahead and update that page. And let's get started with our design. So first thing we want to do is go to our outer container. We know we want to end up with a full width area. So let's just set it to full width. And then that padding that I added, let's remove it from the right hand side. And we'll leave the other stuff as is for now. And we'll come back and make adjustments to it. I also don't want these pagination dots down at the bottom. And I do want to keep my arrows. So I'll leave those in play for now. So we'll come, we'll click back here on this loop carousel. Be sure not to click that edit template or you can always come back. And we'll go to pagination and we will turn off our dots. Excellent. All right, let's jump in here. Click that edit template. 
And now we can edit that template right on the page. It's just a little easier to visualize what's going on here. So first thing, let's uh, add our border. So if I click our outer container here and under style, I have border. And let's set it to solid. Maybe two pixels. And it looks like I had a little bit of a border radius on there. So let's do that too. How about 20 pixels? Nice and curvy. Sounds great. Then we'll change the color here. And we have our boxes. We deal with the space between our boxes within our actual loop element on the page. So here we'll just deal with what's inside the box and then we'll go back to what's outside the box when we're done here. So let's take a look at our fonts here. I just wanna play with some fonts, make this look a little better. I got some presets in here, I cheated, I know. But you can set any fonts you want. You're gonna have totally different fonts than I have anyway, so that'll be fine. And we'll do the same here for our name. Give ourselves some nice hierarchy. And maybe throw a color on here. And then it looks like we need to do our business name. So come in here. Pretty much started with my body font. And then I think I made it just a little bit smaller. And I made it italic. And I think I adjusted the color. I think I started with a gray and Maybe just went a little bit lighter just to give myself a little bit of a difference there. So taking a look at these things here, look pretty close. I think maybe the last thing we're missing is just a little bit of spacing below the statement. So I'll just throw maybe 10 pixels down here. Maybe check that out. All right, we're getting close. So now we need to deal with some of that spacing and see where we're at. So let's go ahead and update. I imagine if I click save and back, it'll prompt me anyway, but I've lost too many things to take chances sometimes. Let's click our loop carousel again, and let's go ahead and add some spacing between these items. Let's take a look here, maybe 40. Oh, so close. There we go, fantastic. 60 pixels, and we have our spacing. I'm going to jump back over to my content, content tab here. And I want to make sure that all my testimonials fill out here. So I'll just go ahead and throw a 99 in here. We do want to show three at a time. So that's good. And I do like the equal height setting. So I'll leave that in place. So the last thing we want to do is maybe add in a little bit of negative margin here to bring this over to the right hand side. So uh, within this element, I'll go to the advanced tab. I'll come into my margin. We can use percent here. And we'll just go ahead and bring this right till it feels right. That looks pretty good. All right, we got our negative margin in place and all of our design, all of our fonts are set. So the last thing we need to do is work on this arrow here to have it match. Now, if I click this arrow, you'll see it actually goes in that direction as opposed to, if I click this one, it's actually going the opposite way as a back arrow. So I'm gonna flip these things. So to do that, we're gonna go into our carousel under the content tab. Under our navigation settings, that's where we deal with our arrows. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off that previous arrow and that next arrow, which is off the side of the page to the right, we're gonna bring that back. So I'm gonna go down here to this next arrow. I'm going to push it over to the left-hand side. So now it is over here. It's facing the wrong way, but at least it's on the right side. And maybe we will add some negative spacing here. Oh, I'm sorry, positive spacing here. Looks good, we brought it out here, perfect. All right, so now we just need to bring in a new icon. So you can use the icons here within the icon library, just select all and we start with left, pick anything that you like, looks great. I'm not a huge fan of these uh, big bulky font awesome icons, so I have uploaded my own SVG. If you don't know how to do this, uh, really easy to do this stuff. Check out my other video on how to upload some Google font SVGs uh, to give yourself a nice look to these icons. So next, 
Let's go ahead and color this, make it bigger and finish up. Under our style tab, we'll see our navigation. We can add a color to it, maybe make it a little bit bigger. That looks pretty good. And maybe a hover color just for fun. There we go. And it's working the right direction. So last thing we need to do is just check out our mobile responsiveness and make sure everything looks good and make those adjustments that we're going to need to make definitely uh, for our mobile device with some of these negative margins. So one thing to just before we even start that, uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed sometimes with these Elementor websites, when you have some overflow, so you have some things, negative margins off the side, you can add up some weird effects on mobile. So go ahead and take care of that now in this outer container. Go to your layout tab, additional options, and set overflow to hidden. And then you won't end up with that issue. So now let's jump back over here and take a look at our mobile settings. So we'll start with tablet here. Halfway decent, pretty close. Just minor adjustments to make. I don't really necessarily like the size of the icon. It stayed a little bit too big. Uh, we want to bring it a little bit closer, maybe a smidge, and maybe create a little bit more of a negative margin here to get this more off the page. So let's jump into that negative margin. We had a minus 15%. Let's go ahead and just do 20. There we go. And let's fix this icon. That's under style, navigation. And I think we could just make a little change there. That looks good. And we'll go back under our navigation options here. And we'll adjust this positioning maybe to 50 pixels. I like that kind of split even difference there. Perfect. All right, let's look at mobile, which is going to be a little bit of a nightmare because we don't have room for text like this to fit more than one of these testimonials. So what I will do in this situation is just get rid of my negative margin. And then we can adjust our outer container and add some padding back on there. Huge fan of sevens on the left and right and usually like maybe 15 pixels on the top and bottom on mobile. Sorry, 15%, not pixels. There we go. Now we do have this arrow that is off the side here. So let me go ahead and um, show you where that is. Um, if I go to my loop carousel and I come down to my navigation again, and I look at this offset, if I set this position at zero, you can see my arrow is still there. It's off the side of the page. It could cause some weird issues uh, when people turn their mobile screens and rotate them and whatnot. So what I like to do in this situation is come to style and under navigation, just set the size to zero. So it just goes away. Um, you can get, have other creative options, of course, to solve that. You can bring in other things to, um, you know, to display. Um, but this looks really nice and solves the issue. So it looks like we have our testimonial built, our testimonial feed. It's feeding our different categories we've learned how to add different feeds on different pages and feed different categories so have fun out there and build some cool stuff if you found this useful feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you have any questions or ideas for other videos let me know in the comments below